for coming as usual and it's great to see so many people who still uh, just come here quite naturally. Nothing's organised, um, we don't really promote it and push, but we welcome people. And how wonderful that year after year people turn up. Some of us know each other, there's others who none of us know. There are individuals who come every year and then just disappear back till the next year. But obviously they come for a reason. And what's so wonderful is that we can still meet and there is this organic growth of people who still are true to the real meaning of what fighting for Hillsborough was all about. Fighting for the pure truth and justice. We stand here today, 34 years after the event that killed now officially 97 people. But we all know that it's far greater than that, the number. We know survivors that have committed suicide. We know of people who are so still so traumatized and live poor lives. Only recently, someone who was at Hillsborough stopped me, a friend, and said that the person he took with him to Hillsborough, who was 15 years of age, had died. He hadn't had a good life after Hillsborough because of the trauma he suffered. He died as a middle-aged man, stolen years, and it made me think that all those young people who went to Hillsborough that day, who survived, you're middle-aged men now, and your life has been stolen. The quality of life has been stolen from you because of what happened that day and the subsequent lies that were told about you. It's robbery, pure and simple. You should never have had to fight. You should have been celebrated for the role you took in saving lives. Instead, you were blamed for them. And it's hurtful. And what is hurtful, uh, that when we were taken on the system, and let's face it, that's what we were doing. Other people were prepared to walk alongside the system and become incorporated into it. I've said year after year that Hillsborough is becoming a brand. It sells and it's become corporate. People are fighting now for Hillsborough law. Commendable. But people should never have to suffer. What that shows intrinsically is that the system's corrupt. You shouldn't need an extra layer of law to say policemen shouldn't lie, organisations shouldn't lie, you should tell the truth. That should be a given to any public servant, but it's not. But fighting for Hillsborough and Hillsborough law should also be about fighting for justice generally. And we should pass on the experience we have and we gained over many years to help others fighting injustices who might not have the support that we had because we had you and we had other good supporters from around the world, not just from this country, to help us and to save um, maybe further deaths. It's always a sad day, but also as well, it fills us with joy that we are still standing and we see people who we might only see once a year but we're not a formal organisation, we're not corporate, we're not registered as a company, we're not making money out of Hillsborough. And I say that because there are people who are, and I find it totally distasteful. Fight the good fight, fight for just laws, but do it because you want to do it. Don't do it because you want a career out of it, or because you want to make money. How many of you standing here today have benefited from what happened to you at Philsborough. Far from it, it's quite the opposite. You've suffered and you continue to suffer. But the pride I feel personally as part of the Hillsborough Justice Campaign, that you still come here and that we provided a base from which to springboard to challenge the establishment, fills me with a great sense of achievement. 
Fellows for Justice campaign was a grassroots organisation that wasn't formed by people like me and others saying, hey, this is a good idea. It was formed because you wanted it. You created it. And you know the good thing? We kept control of it. Now, we are being written out of history. You will not find the Hills for Justice campaign mentioned anywhere in anything that is written about Hillsborough law or any of the events that take place when there's anything political going on in the city. We are not invited to any events, any discussions around how to move forward over Hillsborough. They are ignoring the experts, because you are the experts, we are all the experts, but you know what that says to me? We are doing it for the right reasons, we are challenging things, we are not wanting to become part of it. So they can write us out of history all they like, but we are not going anywhere, we are not going away. And people will have to get their heads around that. So today, um, let's remember the 97 dead of Hillsborough. Let's remember the survivors who have gone. Let's remember people like Jerry McIver, who is the backbone of the Hillsborough Justice Campaign shop. No agenda, no ego, never wanted anything out of it other than to help. And people can take a lesson out of his book. And
David William Mark, Brian Christopher Matthews, Francis Joseph McAllister, John McGrath O'Brien, Marion Hayes McLean, Joseph Daniel McCarthy, Peter McDonald, Alan McLean, Keith McGrath, Paul Brian Murray, Lee Nicholl, Stephen Francis O'Neill, John Paul, William Roy Pemberton, Carl William Winner, David George Winner, Graham John Roberts, Stephen Joseph Robinson, Henry Charles Rogers. Colin Andrew, Hugh William Sefton, Ina Charles, Paula Ann Smith, Adam Edward Spirit, Philip John Steele, David Leonard Thomas, Patrick John Thompson, Peter Rubin Thompson, Stuart Paul William Thompson, Peter Francis Cooper. Christopher James Swain, Martin Kevin Swain, Kevin Swain, Colin Winter, Ian David Green, Martin Kenneth Wilde, Kevin Daniel Williams, William John Wright. Thank you. We will all observe a minute's silence now. <laughs> 